Let's start with education. Most Idaho children who were in the first grade when I became governor are now starting their last session of their senior year in high school. Every program, initiative, and investment that I mention here today is focused on providing those young men and women with a leg up on post-secondary education and career opportunities to ensure that we have effective teachers leading that effort in every Idaho classroom. My executive budget calls for providing nearly $42 million in fiscal year 2019 for the fourth year of implementing our career ladder system for education. Shifting how we fund teacher salaries from years in service and education credits to student outcomes represents a significant ongoing investment in human capital supporting teachers' professional development while establishing long-term blueprints for teacher recruitment and retention. For all of us, literacy is essential to develop the other skills needed to advance successfully through life. Thousands of Idaho children start that educational journey already reading below grade level. That leaves many of them struggling through their school years and beyond while requiring educators to employ more costly remedial reading programs. With your help, we implemented an early intervention program two years ago. For kindergarten through third grades who face severe reading challenges. But that program addressed only those at the very lowest level of reading skills. There are thousands more who are not yet proficient. So I'm asking today for $6.5 million in fiscal year 2019 to expand our literacy intervention efforts. We must provide a timely boost for these children before the focus of their education moves from the fundamental skill of reading to the applied skill of reading to learn. I'm also seeking an additional $5 million a year for college and career advising. That money is intended to ensure that all districts can implement effective programs for helping stu students plan for life after high school. Whether for college or technical training, improving students' and parents' access to information about careers and post-secondary opportunities is an essential step in providing for Idaho's future and our workforce needs. So is responsibly putting modern learning tools in every Idaho classroom. My budget recommendation calls for investing an additional $10 million in school technology starting next year, bringing our total annual investment in technology for students and teachers to $36 million. That will require that districts and charter schools have well-developed plans for sustainably integrating technology into their curricula. An even more fundamental change in our classroom is Idaho's ongoing shift to mastery-based education. The effort benefited from an initial investment in 19 incubator schools. Those schools have worked during the past two years to establish a network of support and best practices and to identify barriers to implementation. By investing another $1.4 million per year, we can continue developing and implementing our statewide plan by expanding the number of schools participating in mastery-based education network. Ladies and gentlemen, our five-year plan for improving public schools is a watershed investment for Idaho, and it's a tremendous achievement. With strong and diverse stakeholder involvement, with buy-in from educators and patrons and policymakers, and with your continued leadership and support, Idaho, Idaho will keep building a world-class education system. That includes such local efforts as Bonneville County voters, turning Eastern Idaho Technical College into the College of Eastern Idaho with your help of $5 million in startup money. And I appreciate it. Did a great job. So my congratulations, my congratulations to the people of Eastern Idaho for creating this, this new, this great new opportunity for more of the citizens to affordably take their education beyond high school, much closer to home. As you know, there's a robust debate in Bonneville County and beyond about the costs and the benefits associated with creating the College of Eastern Idaho. 
And that's a good thing. That's as it should be. An open process and meaningful public engagement are necessary to crafting sound public policy. And that's especially true on issues as complex and controversial as allocating limited resources to our education priorities. The success of our K-12 task force for improving education, I believe, bears that out. So I'd like to thank the 36 members of my higher education task force who worked during the past year to assess how we can achieve that moonshot goal of ensuring that 60% of our young adults have a post-secondary academic degree or professional technical credential. Their, class, their assessment is sobering and their solution is bold. But I believe implementing it is necessary not only for our students, but for Idaho's economy. The task force concluded that we will never achieve the 60% goal the way higher education in Idaho is structured today. So its 12 recommendations focus on dramatically changing the way that our system works to make it more integrated, consolidated, and student-centric. Therefore, my budget request includes funding for State Board of Education to hire an executive officer to coordinate the work of all higher education institutions. The executive officer will also manage the system-wide consolidation of higher education support operations, the backroom operations, and the board's continuing policy functions. There's no doubt that these changes will upend the status quo. They will mean less working from isolated silos and more rowing in the same direction. And they will result And they will result in tens of millions of dollars in efficiencies, savings that now can be used for scholarships and new initiatives, lowering the price of education. That includes in creating a statewide digital campus to better keep pace with continuing change in what we need our, our higher education system to deliver. I want to emphasize that we're not talking about a chancellor system here with schools becoming campuses of a single university. I agree with the task force finding that such a change would be overly disruptive. But there's no doubt about the advantages and the necessity of adopting an executive officer model if we are serious about making and keeping Idaho economically competitive. Here's a staggering metric. The task force found that state income tax collections in Idaho would increase by $500 million a year with no change in population when the state reaches its 60% achievement goal, compared with today's 42%. This is not a reflection of our State Board of Education members or the leadership of our institutions. The system itself is slow to adapt, too good at perpetuating the status quo, and it simply is not equipped or empowered to make the big management changes needed to achieve our 60% goal. Without these changes, we very likely will make no more progress toward that goal in the next 10 years than we have in the past seven. We still must better define the scope of work required to achieve the consolidation that we need. As a first step, I'm seeking your support for the task force recommendation that we implement a statewide degree audit and data analytic system. That will enable all our secondary institutions to identify students early on who need additional support or guidance, and then track their progress toward degree completion anywhere in our system. To address access and affordability, the task force recommended that, and I am requesting, an additional $5 million for the Opportunity Scholarship Program, which is helping students like Boise's Holland God be. It enabled her to go to college full-time and work part-time without going deep into student loan debt. Holland, thanks for being here with us today. Holland, would you please stand? <laughs> Holland is using her scholarship to attend Boise State University at hope, in hopes of entering the high-demand field of physical therapy. Now, Holland was one of more than 1,500 Idaho students who received an opportunity scholarship for their first year of college. But that was less than half of the more than 3,300 
who were eligible but got no assistance. We can and should do more. And by the way, as a proud father, I would tell you that Holland's instructor at Boise State is my daughter, Kimberly. My executive budget also calls for dedicating a portion of that $5 million to providing adult completion scholarships. Now that's not a program for subsidizing dropouts. It's about creating the workforce that Idaho employers need. It's about closing our skills gap by bringing students with some college credits back to our certificate associates or bachelor degree programs to finish what they started. And it's about also about preserving the value of investment already made in partially completed studies. Folks, the Adult Completion Scholarship Program is like finding money. So let's get it found. Creating a homegrown pipeline of educated, trained workers also was the mission of my industry-driven workforce development task force. My budget reflects the task force recommendations that we invest in expanding capacity at our post-secondary technical schools in providing additional incentive funding for high school career technical programs and expanding the CTE offerings to the 7th and 8th grade. I'm also calling for the development of more online CTE classes and increased support for our six regional workforce training centers. In the meantime, I have implemented <coughs> task force recommendations aimed at ensuring employers have a more meaningful role in making our statewide workforce training efforts more responsive and adaptive to the industry's increasing technical needs. I will introduce legislation this session, codifying changes to the structure and the authority of the Workforce Development Council and how it invests in some of the one of the most crucial elements of Idaho's continuing economic growth. 